Diamond P Sports presents championship drag racing from the National Hot Rod Association. The 24th Annual U.S. National. Brought to you by English Leather Toiletries for Men. Ask for English Leather at fine toiletry counters everywhere. And by Champion Spark Plugs. For better performance, change your plugs at least once a year with a fresh set of Champions. You can't buy a better plug. And by Pennzoil, the Ascor motor oil in the familiar yellow can. Remember, when your car is worth caring for, Pennzoil is worth asking for. U.S. Nationals. The name itself stands for the largest drag racing event in the world. 24 years have elapsed since the first Nationals was staged on an airport runway in Great Bend, Kansas. Since then, the Nationals has developed a tradition which encompasses much more than close racing, a panorama of color and excitement that ranks the Nationals with any major sporting event. The festival atmosphere prevails everywhere, and there's nothing like a pretty girl to help this massive crowd show its appreciation. Hello everybody, I'm Dave McClelland and welcome to the Nationals. Joining me here today is Steve Evans, who can tell us just how big this event really is. Steve? Dave, the magnitude of this 24-year-old U.S. Nationals is just awesome. Over a thousand participants, over $400,000 in cash awards, a 200-acre racing facility, 1,000 workers, about $15 million pumped into the Hoosier economy, and I mean there's not a motel room for 75 miles. 100,000 people are ready. I'm certainly ready for the finals of the granddaddy of all drag races, the U.S. Nationals. We'll be back with racing from the Nationals in just a moment. I think women are becoming a little more frightening to men these days. Maybe because we're freer to do much more. But some men aren't intimidated at all. They enjoy our freedom. Those are the men I like. And you know, those are the men who wear English leather cologne. English leather fits the way they live. It's so clean and natural, and I love it. So all my men wear English leather, or they wear nothing at all. Look for English leather in a wide selection of gift sets. Be there with National Dragster, the official newspaper of the NHRA. Page after page crammed with all the news. Who, what, where, when, how fast, how fast, every week. National Dragster brings all the action right to your mailbox. National Dragster, subscribe now. $10 gets you a six-month subscription, 25 weekly issues, automatic membership in the NHRA, and a packet of goodies. Send $10 to National Dragster, PO Box 150, North Hollywood, California. Check, money order, or Visa card accepted. A lot of stories have developed at the U.S. Nationals through four full days of qualifying. The crowd's attention has been focused on a two-time national champion. Gary Beck of El Toro, California, won this event in 1972 and 1973. Here in 78, he debuted a brand new look in top fuel racing. This is his new car. Let's compare it with his old car. Look at the wing placement. Look at the engine placement. Look at the driver placement, the general configuration of the body. Now compare this with the 1978 version. Notice how low the wing sits above the rear wheels. The engine placement itself much further out from the rear end. The configuration of the body designed to slip through the air a little better. A windscreen designed to protect Beck himself from the blast of air at over 230 miles an hour. In the first round of racing, Gary met up against the defending champion, Dennis Baca. Side by side, you see the difference between the two cars. Baca's car, very similar to Beck's old car. And in the first round, it's Gary Beck winning it at 6.09 seconds. His speed, 233 miles an hour. 
Gary had a lot of trouble making this program, qualifying on his final qualifying attempt yesterday. In slow motion, you can see even better the difference between the cars. Look how much lower Beck's car sits than Baca's. And it seems to pay off as in the middle of the course, he pulls away from the defending champion. Let's go now to Steve Evans. Brake's pretty hot, it looks like, on Gary Beck's cars. There was no shoot, and the car stopped amazingly well, considering there was no parachute at all. A 6.09 wins it for Gary Beck in round number one, and he told us yesterday he was a pressure player. Did you have to just lean all over it, Gary? Well, we found some uh, things wrong uh, right at the last minute. We had to put a new wire harness on the car, and we started back up there in the last second, and it sounded a lot better. We just hoped that we found it. That's true. Maybe we can race this car yet. You never know. Well, Gary tried, but he didn't get any better, as in round number two racing, he faced Rob Bruins. Bruins in the far lane, again with a conventional style car. And Gary's car, the best he could muster in round number two was a 624, while Rob Bruins streaked to a 588, defeating Gary Beck in round number two. Also in round number two, we found Frank Bradley, former Winter Nationals champion, up against the low qualifier, Dave Uhara. Yohara recorded a 5.84 second elapsed time in qualifying. Relative unknown on the national event trail. Very, very strong in West Coast racing. He won this race handily as Frank Bradley went into a wheel stand at the start, losing by virtue of a red light. But Yohara had a 5.91 second elapsed time. Showed that he certainly has the power that he displayed in qualifying. Ran 238 miles an hour. This is round number two racing. The wheel stand by Bradley costing him the race in the red light. Let's go again to Steve Evans. You know, you have a reputation on the West Coast for being very, very sharp on the Christmas tree. Do you plan to, to shave it close, or do you think you got enough performance propelling you here to, well, to not gamble? You always got to shave them close because everybody is tough here. So we're going to have to keep it the same every time. All eyes were on the starting line for this second round race. The world champion, Shirley Muldowney, was matched against her former crew chief, Connie Kalita. That's right, the man that had prepared the car that carried Shirley to the world championship decided early this season to go racing on his own. And they were matched against each other in the second round of racing at the Nationals. As we saw they were going to run each other, we asked them how they felt about it. I raced her a couple weeks ago and I give her two driving lessons, two of them, one right after the other. It's just another race, Steve. He's just another racer up there, and he better have his act together. So they're on the starting line. Shirley Muldowney in the near lane. Connie Kalita in the far lane. A close race. And there it was, Shirley Muldowney defeating her former crew chief. 5.97 seconds her elapsed time. Her speed, 240 miles an hour. In slow motion, you can see they left the starting line together. At the middle of the course, they were still side by side. But at the finish line, Shirley prevailed by just a few feet. Connie running a 6.01 second elapsed time, very respectable. Shirley quite happy heading back to the pits to get her car ready for round number three, along with a number of other racers. Richard Tharp, the driver for Candies and Hughes out of Homa, Louisiana. Jeb Allen, winner of the recent Summer Nationals Championship. Kelly Brown, the man that could lock up the World Championship at this event. Young Rob Bruins, recording some fine, outstanding elapsed times. Larry Dixon, a former Winter Nationals champ from California. And the low qualifier at the Nationals, Dave Yorahara. Round number three, top fuel eliminator, Jeb Allen on a burnout. The burnout, unique to drag racing, designed to heat up the tires. Let's watch it again in slow motion as Jeb Allen, with some 2,000 horsepower at his command, lets the clutch out, drops the hammer on the accelerator pedal, the tires growing in height and literally burning themselves. Heating up the tires to get as much traction as possible, and he will need it against this man, Kelly Brown, winner of four national championships thus far in 1978. Reset, Drake, and Brown, they call themselves the other guys. 
Jeb Allen in the near lane, Kelly Brown in the far lane. Side by side, they leave the starting line. And the motor going away on Kelly Brown's car, and Jeb Allen, his hand in the air, waving to the camera. He takes the win, 5.99 seconds, defeating Kelly Brown. But by virtue of his two previous round wins, Kelly Brown has won the world championship for 1978. He wanted to win this race, but it wasn't his day. The motor going away at that point for Kelly Brown. Here we see Kelly taking off running, and he's going down to congratulate Jeb Allen. Let's go to Steve. Kelly Brown, well, your Nationals hopes are ended, but uh, the pressure is off. You've won the World Championship. Enough points earned here. It's going to be a big number one on your car next year. Yeah, well, I'm very disappointed because uh, obviously this was the race to win for us at the moment, but uh, World Championship means a tremendous amount, and uh, we'll keep going. It won't get us down now, you know. Looks like you burned up a motor on that I last race. I think we did, yeah. It, uh, it was very close, about 1,000 feet, and it just fell down right there. And, uh, Pick a winner for me now. You're out. Who's going to win it? I would have to say uh, Robbie Bruins. That's who I go for. Okay, we'll see. Kelly Brown forecasts Rob Bruins as the eventual winner of the U.S. Nationals, but he departs world champion. Enjoying the best day of his long career is Larry Dixon. Larry made it to the winner's circle in 1970, winning the Winter Nationals. This is the best showing he's made since that time. The Candies and Hughes car driven by Richard Tharp in the winner's circle at this event just a couple of years ago. Richard Tharp also a former world champion. Dixon a little bit ahead at the start. And at the finish line is Larry Dixon, 6.07 seconds. The Tharp slowing 6.14. 234 miles an hour of the speed for Dixon, 233 for Tharp. Some of the closest racing ever seen in drag racing has been the feature of this 1978 U.S. Nationals. Here in slow motion, we can see Larry Dixon doing a fine driving job. The car starting to make a move towards the center line. He drove right away from it and pulled out the win in the speed traps. Larry Dixon getting his car ready to go back into the pits. A lot of preparatory work going on between each round of racing with these 2,000 horsepower top fuel dragsters. The low qualifier, Dave Uahara. The race of his life, this time he's matched against the man whose name is synonymous with top fuel racing, Big Daddy Don Garlitz out of Sefner, Florida. Uahara qualifying in with a 5.84 second elapsed time the quickest time down this Indianapolis Raceway Park quarter mile. The team is called the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Their names are Velasco, Cohen, and Oswald. We ask, which one is which? He's good, he's bad, and I'm ugly. You got it. That's it. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and Dave Yohara against Don Garlitz. This is round number three racing in Top Fuel. A great start by Garlitz. Yohara all over the racetrack, and it's Big Daddy wire to wire, 5.91 seconds, his speed 242 miles an hour, but the story here is Dave Yohara was just a little bit quicker. He ran 5.88 seconds at 243 miles an hour. Let's go back in slow motion. Maybe you can pick it up. It's just hundreds of a second. You saw Garlitz move first, and that's what counted at the finish line. Each lane of the racetrack, a separate racetrack with its own timing devices, and it records Garlitz there first. Let's go to Steve. Well, Big Daddy was a little late in the previous round, but he sure sharpened up for you, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. He sure came in. Do you know what he ran? Uh, he ran a little bit slower than you did. A 591, you ran a 588. Oh, no. <laughs> You're a little well, teasing about that. Yeah, probably, but we know this thing's a little slow leaving because of the crower glide. We've got a different kind of clutch in it than the rest of them. One more race remains in top fuel round number three. And it is Rob Bruins driving Gaines Barkley's car. And you heard Kelly Brown, the man that won the world championship by virtue of his performance at this meet, pick Rob Bruins to win it. Shirley Muldowney, though, has a different thought. She is the reigning world champion. She wants to win the Nationals. Watch closely to see if one car gets an advantage over the other at the start. Looks very close. Bruins all over the racetrack, but he gets there first, and that's what counts. 5.92 seconds for Bruins, his speed 238 miles an hour. Shirley Baldowney, 6.01 at 229. 
here again. Let's go back and watch as Rob Bruins, the car dancing across his lane, has recorded a fine 588 previously in round number two, this time a 591, and we'll go to Steve Evans. Close race, Rob. Well, I was so far out of shape, I didn't know where she was. Were you worried about crossing the center line? Yeah, the center line or hitting the guardrail, <laughs> one or the other. This has to be the finest moment in your career, even though we're just to the semifinals. It's great. Uh, the car's running super, you know. Uh, we all know Gaines has been there, I and mean, Gaines knows how to make him run. All I got to do is hit the pedal on time. I've been asking other drivers as they lose down here who they pick to win, and guess who? You. Well, it makes me feel good. They've got, you know, the confidence in us, and, and I know the car's up to it if I can keep from messing up, I guess. And Jeb Allen is hard at work in his pit area to try to prevent Kelly Brown's prediction from coming true. He has the distinction of racing the hot running Rob Bruins in the semifinal round of Top Fuel. We'll be back with more racing from the U.S. Nationals at Indianapolis Raceway Park in just a moment. If your engine isn't starting on cue, Put in a fresh set of Champion spark plugs at least once a year. Champion and your engine can make beautiful music together. You can't buy a better plug. National Dragster. All the sights, all the sounds, and all the thrills are inside the pages. All the pages, every week. National Dragster. It's for the pro the amateur, and everyone else who loves drag racing. Get a taste of it. Six-month subscription, 25 weekly issues, automatic membership in the NHRA, and a packet of goodies, all for $10. Send $10 to National Dragster, P.O. Box 150, North Hollywood, California. Check, money order, or Visa card accepted. One of the greatest hazards facing a funny car driver is an exploding engine and subsequent fire. Steve earlier took a look at some of the safety precautions at the Nationals. Dave, every time the funny car drivers suit up, so does a member of the NHRA Safety Safari in this special suit. Aluminized boots, a three-layer suit, a sock for his head, a helmet to go on over that, and somehow the thought of a funny car fire is just a little less terrifying knowing that Ronnie Wilson can go in and get the driver out. And Ronnie Wilson was involved in one of the hottest fires ever seen at the Nationals. In qualifying, Gene Snow against Trip Shoemake. Shume qualified on this pass. He got very close to the center line, but that's not the story. The exploding engine is the story. You can see the parachute burned off. Ronnie Wilson headed towards the scene of the fire as Trip Shoemake fought to keep the car under control. All the emergency units rolled to the scene. Shoemake himself, using the onboard fire extinguishing system, knocked down the flames. The emergency crew getting to the scene just as he climbed through the emergency hatch on the top of the car. Some small fire still burning at the back of the car, obviously the parachute pack. An instant replay, we see the engine exploded just past the finish line. The parachute burned off, and that makes it doubly difficult to stop this car. He not only has to worry about the fire, he now has to worry, will the brakes stop it? Will the tires burn off? Can he hit the onboard fire extinguishing system? And right there, you see, with a big puff of smoke, that's just what he did. Here, the parachute burns off. He's on the brakes. The car bounces. The big rear tires acting just like big rubber balls as the car bounces its way down the shutdown area with flames licking out from both the front and the rear of the car. The cockpit, relatively free of flames. That's due to the firewall system that is built into these fiberglass bodied cars. Here he starts to lose control of it, but he regains it as Ronnie Wilson grabs his helmet and the safety safari truck heads to Trip Shoemake, driving for Johnny Loper. As he qualified on this run, a very expensive qualifying pass, the engine literally destroying itself. The car relatively unharmed, a burned parachute pack. They've got a lot of work to do, but they qualified. In the first round of racing, we see the man that has dominated funny car racing throughout the past three years. Three-time world champion and the defending national champion, Don Prudhomme, against Pat Foster. Prudhomme, 
left the starting line first. He got to the finish line first in the first round. 5.97 seconds, 245 miles an hour. That time recorded in the first round of racing equaled both the elapsed time and top speed national records. And it's just an indication that Prudhoe may be headed to his second in a row national championship in funny cars. Foster a very respectable run, but didn't stand a chance. Let's go to Steve. Well, just when it appeared the field might be closing in, the snake comes up with low elapsed time and top speed. Did you hear the times on the PA just now? Yeah. yeah. 597, 245. It was nice. Yeah, I got it. It really felt good. The track is in excellent shape, and we just need to do about three more of those. <laughs> Why would the track come around on Monday morning? It was a little off during qualifying, other than in the very early portions when Raymond Beetle ran 598. I don't know. You know, this track is tremendous, and they, they take such good care of it, NHRA and their crew and staff and everything. You know, they wash it and da darn near shampoo the place before we run, and uh, it's just in tremendous condition. Still in the first round of racing, Ron Colson driving the Hawaiian ran against Billy Graham. Graham from Manhattan, Kansas in the near lane had a clutch explode, and you can see the parts and pieces bouncing on the racetrack. Colson taking an easy win as the clutch literally exploded inside the car. Once again, the safety safari crew racing to the scene. The car body being lifted up and Billy Graham himself getting out of the car. The crew quickly putting some water and fire extinguishing compound just to knock down any fire that may have occurred. Here you see the clutch explode in this cloud of dust in Billy Graham's million dollar baby the safety requirements of the NHRA have just about eliminated the injuries as a result of clutch explosions you can see some debris bouncing out onto the track coming out from underneath the car of Graham but Graham himself absolutely uninjured bringing the car to a safe stop one very disappointed guy after the first round of racing at the Nationals, but very lucky the clutch exploded right under his feet. We're set now to go into round number two of Funny Car Eliminator at the Nationals. Some of the stars you'll be seeing, Kenny Bernstein. Tom the Mongoose McEwen from Fountain Valley, California. Tom Hoover drives the Showtime Corvette. Raymond Beadle, the low qualifier and driver of the famed Blue Max. Ron Colson, driving Roland Leong's Hawaiian. Little John Lombardo from North Hollywood, California. And this is Trip Shoemake. We saw that horrendous fire in qualifying. Trip Shoemake and Johnny Loper and the entire crew a lot of work to get it ready. They won their first round race in their match right now against Don Prudhomme. Earlier, Prudhomme had set low elapsed time at 5.97 seconds. Can Shoemake beat the snake? Not on this run. Don Prudhomme, 6.04 seconds, 243 miles an hour. Shoemake gave it a valiant effort at 6.32 seconds elapsed time. He only ran 193 miles an hour, shutting it off early as he saw Prudhomme leaving him in the dust. Teen at 236 miles an hour. Beetle 624, very close at 231. The speed for Ray Beetle. Here we see the margin of victory, just a few short feet as Tom McEwen defeats Ray Beetle. Let's go again to Steve Evans. And always calm and collected Ray Beetle. I don't think you knew who won, did you? No, it was real close. I saw him as I shut off, but I didn't know if he passed me in the lights or who won. Yeah, he's, he certainly did. But you leave here uh, being only the second funny car to ever run in the fives, and that's got to give you a tremendous feeling of accomplishment and pride in your car and your crew. Yeah, we've had a lot of problems this year, and when the cars come around the last five or six weeks, so we're not disappointed. We'd like to have won the race, of course, but could have been worse. We, there's a lot of good cars that didn't even make it, and I know how that feels, too. Number four in the world last year, Little John Lombardo from North Hollywood, California, experiencing one of the best days of his long career in funny car racing. Racing against Tom Hoover of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hoover also at the wheel of a Corvette, calls it the showtime, but look at Lombardo. 6.08, the elapsed time. He only ran 225 miles an hour. 
Very conservative, always conservative. Little John in at a 6.08, advancing to the semifinal. The time for Hoover, 6.21, 227. Ron Colson, driver of the Hawaiian, owned by Roland Leong. The Hawaiian race cars have won this Nationals several times, 1965 and 1966 to be exact, when Roland ran top fuel dragsters. For the past few years, he's been running plenty of cars. This one of the best, one of the quickest in qualifying at a 6.03. Here in slow motion, you see the burnout heating up those huge 16 to 18 inch wide slicks, trying to find the traction for the 2,000 horsepower that's available to Ron Colson. He's supposed to be running Kenny Bernstein, but Bernstein has not shown at the starting line. Back in the pits, the body is off the car. Apparently irreparable damage done to the engine in the previous round of racing. So it will be a single and easy run for Ron Colson at the wheel of the Hawaiian. And Colson loses control and crosses the center line. That puts him out of competition. The rules read you cannot cross the center line or the outer extremity line, which in this case is the guardrail. And Ron Colson out of competition as the Hawaiian going out of control, unable to keep it in his lane. Even though no one was in the other lane, the rules still read you can't cross the center line. And there he goes, making a sharp move to the right. Ron Colson still a little bit in shock, I think. It's only happened a couple of times in national event competition. There's just so many different ways to lose. Well, it's just, we were trying for lane choice in case there was an oil down. Car started to shake bad, and I tried to stay with it, and it, it got to the point it was uncontrolled when I shut it off, but it was, it was already, you know, out to the point that it got over the center line. Well, there's little I can say to console you, but you leave here with a tremendous mark of 6.03, the quickest the car has ever gone, and uh, I'm sure your many fans are uh, heart sick as well as you are. Well, if I had it to do over again, I'd coast through and take the safe way, but uh, you give it your best shot, see what happens, and sometimes it doesn't work. Watch this remarkable new Kodak pocket camera. Take on Hot Shot Mike. Yeah! It's Extralite. The new Kodak Extralite 10 camera with built-in flash. A built-in electronic flash that'll stop all the action, indoors, and at night. Now get more pictures, more places, more often with Extralight, the new can-do camera from Kodak. It's my ball. Touch dancing is back and I love it. It feels good to be dancing in a man's arms cheek to cheek, especially when his cheek smells of English leather cologne. Mmm, English leather literally sweeps me off my feet. Maybe that's why men who wear English leather always seem to be two steps ahead of me. And maybe that's why all my men wear English leather, or they wear nothing at all. English leather, a complete grooming line for men. This is the 24th annual NHRA U.S. Nationals at Indianapolis Raceway Park. I'm Dave McClelland, and right now, Steve Evans has another look at the disqualification of Ron Colson. David, we have the competition director of the NHRA, Mr. Steve Gibbs, here to give us an explanation on the Ron Colson Hawaiian centerline disqualification. Steve? Well, the purpose of the rule, Steve, is to provide the drivers with a guideline to maintain control of their car. And despite the fact that he was on a single run, he was obviously not in control of the car, and that's the reason for the disqualification. So it's, it's there for the protection of the driver as well as the people alongside the track. In addition to the professional categories being contested here at the U.S. Nationals, we'll be taking a look at the five sportsman categories of competition, starting with Stock Eliminator. Steve Terrence of Bremen, Kentucky, in the far lane in his 66 Chevy 2, contested against Don Holden of Lansing, Michigan, driving a 76 Oldsmobile. Stock Eliminator is a handicap category, whereby the slower car physically gets a head start over the faster. The Oldsmobile station wagon of Holman in hot pursuit of that six-cylinder Chevrolet. Terrence trying to hold on to his handicap start, but at the finish line, it is Holman there first with a 13.39 second elapsed time. 
In super stock eliminator, some modifications allowed to the cars that are not allowed in stock. We see another Chevy too. This one owned by Stanley White of Lincoln, Nebraska. Going off against Dickie Ogles of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Ogles driving the 69 Camaro. And it's an easy win for Stan White at an 11.97 second elapsed time, shutting it off early to only 89 miles an hour. Modified Eliminator, one further step up the ladder. Again, handicap racing, Bruce Sizemore gets the advantage and the win as Sam Janino of Royal Oak, Michigan, breaking on the line with his Monza. Sizemore driving a six-cylinder Pinto to a fine 9.76 second elapsed time. His speed, 137 miles an hour, that with a six-cylinder engine. The top of the line of the handicap racing comes in competition eliminator. From Los Angeles, Larry Torres, Opal GT bodied Econo Altered against the Econo Dragster of John Lingenfelter from Decatur, Indiana. And a close race as Lingenfelter wins his second major championship of the year. His time, 7.98 seconds, a speed of 169 miles an hour. In instant replay, we see where Lingenfelter caught Torres right at the start of the speed trap and about three feet, the margin of victory, as John Lingenfelder wins competition eliminator. And finally, this is ProCom, heads up racing, supercharged on alcohol, John Samalik won ProComp eliminator over Joey Severance. Steve's with John as he got out of his car. The biggest upset of this entire U.S. Nationals event is John Samalik, your first big win. <laughs> uh, you beat the best in the be world. Here. My partner got to be in here. He kept that motor together for me. Oh. This is the first mean. national event win for a small block Chevrolet. Yeah. 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 Lots of tries. Yeah, we've yeah, had five guy times guy. in the finals with small block. Dale Hall, oh, Kenny Cook, just the first one in the small block yeah. one. Out of the some 750 race cars that started in qualifying and eliminations in the sportsman category five days ago, there are your five winners. Pro Stock Racing, the Factory Hot Rods, Joe Satmary against Randy Humphrey. Humphrey from Long Beach, California. Satmary out of Maryville, Indiana. Chevrolet versus Mopar. The RPMs climbing at the starting line in a red light for Randy Humphrey. He knew he had to take a chance on the Christmas tree. And it was Joe Satmary with an easy win. 8.73 seconds elapsed time, 154 miles an hour. There's the red light indicating Randy Humphrey in the near lane, leaving too early. You can see it in the instant replay, just how it happened. The next pair in round number two racing in pro stock, the M&M boys, Maskin and Manorino, Andy Manorino doing the driving. Frank Iaconio from Totowa, New Jersey, in the far lane in the Chevy Monza. Manorino from Livonia, Michigan, drives an American Motors Hornet, but it's Iaconio on this run, 8.71 seconds at 155 miles an hour. A pair of Chevrolets slated to run in this race, but Richie Zool, the Spring Nationals champion, unable to answer the call. Lee Shepard out of Arlington, Texas, taking an easy win. On a single, 8.70 seconds, his speed 150 miles an hour. Steve's in the pits with Richie Zool. What happened, Richie? Well, we had a tough first round, and uh, in order to make it, we had to really lean on the motor and put a hole in one of the pistons. The Ewell Brothers Chevrolet in the near lane. Mark Ewell driving Bob Glidden. And a red light start for Ewell. He knew he had to take a shot against the low qualifier. Bob Glidden with his new Ford Fairmont. And it's Glidden with the win, 8.60 seconds at 154 miles an hour. A red light for Ewell. An instant replay, he really left early before Glidden ever moved. The U.S. Nationals is more than a drag race, and Steve Evans tells us why. David, if you never saw a race here today, you could have a ball just eating. It's a county fair variety of foods. Polar sausage, Italian sausage, breaded beef tenderloin, fresh lemonade, pickles, you name it. For me, I'm gonna help train a nurse with an ear of roasted corn here. I'll take that one right over there. That Eat your heart out, McClellan. Enjoy your box lunch. That one would be just fine. Do we really help train a nurse doing this? You're doing right, we do. We've got seven nurses in training. Well, now. that's good. Bring them on. 
Steve, while you're enjoying that gourmet Indiana corn, we're getting ready for semifinal racing here at Indianapolis Raceway Park and the U.S. National. Kodak introduces Ektramax, the ultimate can-do camera. The new Kodak Ektramax camera. Its fast lens and 400-speed film can take pictures without a flash. In light as low as this, and even this. And when there's no light, the Ektramax camera has a built-in electronic flash. Ektramax, the ultimate can-do camera from Kodak. I'm Shirley Muldowney. All my life I wanted to be the world's fastest racing driver. Well, I made it. Made a few men nervous, too. But others understood. They weren't threatened. They rooted for me. Men like that are pretty special. Their English leather cologne is pretty special, too. English leather has a fresh, masculine scent that doesn't have to prove anything. And neither do the men who wear it. That's why all my men wear English leather, or they wear nothing at all. Back at the U.S. National 97, a 604, and now a 605, putting Prudhomme into the finals. He will be racing Tom the Mongoose McEwen, the classic snake versus mongoose battle once again. McEwen getting an easy run here, a single, as his competition running it off early, obviously just testing the starting line. Didn't want to hurt any parts at a 7.12 elapsed time. That's how long it took him to travel that quarter mile distance from a standing start. His crew heading down to pick him up. As he gets out of his car, here's Steve Evans. Tom McEwen crawling out of his car. He said, I hope maybe Perdome would run over the center line and I wouldn't have to race anybody. Well, that was a tough victory there, this last one. They're all tough for me, the way I drive. <laughs> Were you worried a little bit about maybe crossing the center line like Colson did? That go through your head? Yeah, I thought about it coming up, but... The, this car is pretty good about that, you know, going pretty straight. And I wanted to run the opposite lane, figuring that's where I was going to be anyway. And Lombardo, of course, just smoked the tires and everything in it. So we went up, and I only ran it halfway down the track because I, I tried something a little different that time, and it seems like it worked pretty good. Pro Stock Eliminator Bob Glidden, the Ford Fairmont, winner of four national titles thus far in 1978 against the Chevrolet Monza of Iaconio and Allen. Frankie Iaconio doing the driving. Ray Allen, his partner from Totowa, New Jersey. Out of Whiteland, Indiana, comes Bob Glidden. Leaving the line together. But Glidden pulling ahead to a big win. Glidden, 8.60. Low elapsed time thus far for the Pro Stocks at 153 miles an hour. The next pair on the line, two Chevrolets. Lee Shepard in the far lane, Joe Satmary in the near lane. Texas versus Indiana, a close race. And at the finish line, it's Joe Satmary. 8.74 seconds elapsed time, a quicker time for Shepard at 8.72, but Satmary off the mark just a little bit quicker. At the finish line, just a couple of feet. Top fuel eliminator semifinal, Jeb Allen. Allen running in the near lane. We've seen the money cars. Both of them smoked the tires badly in the left lane. Could be that the lane is going away ever so slightly. Rob ruins the competition for Jeb Allen. And Jeb Allen smokes the tires. Rob Bruins with an easy win. He doesn't backpedal it, though. 5.96 seconds to lap time. Speed of 242 miles an hour. Jeb Allen giving it a valiant try after smoking the tires to a 627. You see the smoke on the starting line, but at the finish line, it's Rob Bruins there first. Maybe a little too much power, Jeb? Yeah, exactly. You know, we thought, we thought the reason everybody ran better in the right lane because it wasn't as good as the left is what my theory was, you know? In the, when I got in the left lane, I'd run an 89 in the right. When I got in the left lane, the car shook. So I figured that's more traction because I was making the same power. So I just put a little bit more power in it and made a mistake. Larry Miner's car driven by Larry Dixon. The unenviable honor of running against Big Daddy Don Garland. Dixon won the Winter Nationals back in 1970. This is the furthest he's gone in competition since that time. Don Garlitz has already won four U.S. Nationals titles, 
a total of 17 top fuel titles during his two decade long career. And Dixon smokes the tires. So the left lane obviously not as good as the right at this moment. Garland's there first at 6.01 seconds. His speed 240 miles an hour. So in the finals of Top Fuel, it'll be Rob Bruins against Don Garland. Down in the pits right now at Don Prudhomme's car, the crew working feverishly to prepare it for the finals. Don Prudhomme is nowhere to be seen. He's in Tom McEwen's pits with Steve Evans. Making the mongoose at it once again. We'll be back with the Nationals finals in just a moment. Your engine is in starting on Q. Put in a fresh set of Champion spark plugs at least once a year. Champion and your engine can make beautiful music together. You can't buy a better plug. It's drag racing champion, 240 mile an hour, Tom McEwen. And 40 mile an hour, Fred Dreyer, dune buggy champ of the L.A. Rams. Hey, Fred, you better watch the speed limit. Look, Tom, they don't call me the Sandman for nothing, you know. Yeah, but first of all, you're a Pennzoil man, right? I put Pennzoil quality in all my buggies. Pennzoil quality. Ask for it. Yeah. The crew members for Don Garlitz getting his engine ready for the final round. Replacing the pistons in the engine, the crowd jamming in close, watching the frantic action. But it's a different story over in Rob Bruin's pit area as we join Steve Evan. I see you working on the supercharger here. A little hop up? No, no, actually, uh, we haven't had the motor apart all day. And on the last run, it got loose a little bit out on the track and it kind of overworked what we thought overworked the piston. So we wanted to look at it. We got the same aid in it we've had all week and all eight are back in it. The final of Crow Stock Eliminator, Bob Glitton and the Ford. In the far lane, the Chevrolet of Joe Satmary. Satmary from Merrillville, Indiana. Has his work cut out for him. Glitton has been in the finals of 11 straight national events. He has won 17 national titles. Glitton debuting a new Ford Fairmont in the middle part of this season has absolutely dominated pro stock racing since that time. The burnout's completed, approaching the starting line. Glidden in the Ford, Satmary in the Chevrolet. A lot of RPM, and they leave the line together. Glidden pulling an early lead. At the middle of the course, he extends it, and it is Bob Glidden winning the race. 8.61 seconds elapsed time. A speed of 146 miles an hour, indicating he shut it off early, backed out of it as he approached the finish line. Later this afternoon, in the near lane, Tom McEwen. And they're off the line, and Prudhomme smokes the tires. McEwen pulling ahead. And it is Tom McEwen with the upset of the race. The crew just going berserk. Tom McEwen's crew members very, very happy as Tom himself winning it for the first time these two cars have met four times before in the final rounds, and this is the first time that McEwen has won it, and an all-important race for him. For just one week ago, Tom's 14-year-old son passed away from leukemia. A great drag racing fan, and he liked nothing better than to see his dad, Tom McEwen, run against Don the Snake Prudhomme. And this time, it was McEwen prevailing. Here is Don Prudhomme going over to congratulate his longtime friend, Tom McEwen. Let's go down to the area and join Steve Evans. A very emotional moment down here. I've seen Don Perdome lose before, and it's usually a recluse. He gets in his truck, he leaves the racetrack immediately, talks to nobody. This is just a little bit different. As many times as I've been here, I have seen few moments packed with as much emotion as this one. Tom McEwen, the winner of Funny Car, getting out of his Corvette. A tribute to McEwen and the Perseverance as he defeated Don Prudhomme for the Funny Car title at the U.S. Nationals. 
Top Fuel Eliminator, the national championship on the line. This man has four national championships to his credit, Big Daddy Don Garland. His competition, Rob Bruins from Federal Way, Washington, driving for Gaines Markley. Steve. Big Daddy Don Garlitz, his fifth U.S. Nationals title, and maybe your toughest. It was a tough one, Steve. The competition has just gotten fantastic. It's probably the best drag race that I've ever witnessed. Your motor seemed to be in intensive care before going into the final round, yet Bruins was unhurt. Yeah, we've had a lot of problems with pistons in the engine, trying to keep it the fuel curve right, and I just can't seem to get it like I'd like it. You know, I don't like to work on my engine, but when you got to run 580s, what can you say? And all that work paid off for Big Daddy Don Garlitz as he won his fifth national championship. In Funny Car Eliminator, Tom McEwen upsetting Don Prudhomme. And in Pro Stock, Bob Glidden continuing his march through the ranks. Steve and I will be back with some final observations in just a moment. National Dragster. All the sights, all the sounds, and all the thrills are inside the pages. All the pages, every week. National Dragster. It's for the pro the amateur, and everyone else who loves drag racing. Get a taste of it. Six-month subscription, 25 weekly issues, automatic membership in the NHRA, and a packet of goodies, all for $10. Send $10 to National Dragster, P.O. Box 150, North Hollywood, California. Check, money order, or Visa card accepted. I like competing against men. But only if they don't patronize me. Then if I win, it's really exciting. You know what else I find exciting? Men who wear English leather cologne. I like the way it smells on men, and I like the kind of men who wear it. I find them to be challenging. When it comes to the battle of the sexes, I don't like pushovers. I guess that's why all my men wear English leather, or they wear nothing at all. The 24th annual U.S. Nationals, an absolutely incredible auto race. For his closing observations, let's join Steve Evans. David, the six days that is, the U.S. Nationals has finally come to a close, but strangely enough, nobody seems to be leaving. I don't think they've recovered from the emotion that we witnessed, especially in these final rounds. Don Garlitz clawing his way through an incredible top fuel field over a smiling young guy, Rob Bruins, who has no regrets about losing that final round. Bob Glidden again proving his supremacy. The first ever pro comp victory by a blown small block Chevrolet. But to me, the grand moment is Don Perdome and Tom McEwen. Their light woody chatter before the final and a motion pack scene at the finish line as Tom McEwen wins his first ever U.S. Nationals and he didn't back into it. A sizzling 6.05. I enjoyed it tremendously like some 100,000 other folks. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Don Garlitz said it, the greatest drag race he's ever seen, and I, for one, have to agree. From Indianapolis Raceway Park, I'm Dave McClellan. So long for now. The U.S. Nationals has been brought to you by English Leather, toiletries for men. Ask for English Leather at fine toiletry counters everywhere. Promotional consideration received and a fee paid by Whammo. Trackball, it's a whole new ball game by Whammo. And by Royce CB, currently giving a factory rebate of up to $20 on any of a dozen CBs at your local dealer. Royce CB, because someday you may need all the CB you can get. Consideration given and a fee also paid by Shakey's Pizza. The Shakey's Pizza Keeper. It's still hot. <laughs> hot, fresh pizza from Shakey's. Take one home. The executive producer of Diamond P Sports, Harvey Pallage. Produced and directed by John B. Mullen. Coverage of the 24th Annual U.S. Nationals was a Diamond P Sports presentation.